is so great to see so many faces. I know uh, we've been talking with people, and it's like, it's so great to see you three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional in, in this screen. Um, we know that people have traveled near and far, so again, we are so grateful to see everyone here. Before I get ready to introduce our first keynote, I do want to remind everyone that we partner with um, a women's local community to um, bring our, to bring the llama game today. And so we wanna make sure that everyone, please make sure you go out and play the game. But we also want you to know that it's not just a llama. These were actually all individually handmade and we're so able, we're so glad that we were able to work with the lo local communities. So please make sure you go out there, have fun. I heard some people giving tips and tricks <laughs> on how to make sure you get that llama. So make sure you ear hustle or you know work with someone that, you, that know how to get those uh, llamas. But again, make sure you take one as a souvenir, a token of appreciation uh, for coming with uh, to be with us this week during our CSV comp. So now, we are getting ready to have our first keynote. We do hope that you all have enjoyed your sessions earlier this morning. And so I am pleased to be able to introduce someone that I've known for seven years and have never seen her personally in person until about three hours ago. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting. But today, um, I get to introduce Laura Asion. She, I asked her, what do you want me to say about you? And she said, it's really not about me and you'll understand why. But she's gonna talk to us today about collective created open science. And as you've seen in the talk, really we're gonna learn today about how to co-create and co-develop communities, particularly in open science in the global south. But she's going to give us a little bit more detail. So I don't want to spill the beans or give you too much or give you too much of a teaser because she's gonna tell us everything that she wants us to know. So let's give a warm welcome Welcome for Laura Asion. Thank you so much, Sarah, for that introduction. Um, it's been lovely to meet you. Uh, and I didn't, Zoom doesn't make you justice, of course. None of you, indeed. Um, so I'm, oh, heck, I'm nervous. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I'm, I'm pleased. This is my first international keynote. I'm 47 years old. I... <laughs> well, OK. Um, don't mess with the time, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep, keep all the applause for the end. OK, deal? Deal? Thank you. Um, so. It's, um, yeah, and I'm very grateful that it's happening in my city because, yeah, I'm nervous, but I didn't have to do a long haul of eight plus hours for once to an international conference or deal with visa issues or deal with lost luggage or, uh, you know, all that all our visitors here uh, may have had to go through. So I feel you. Uh, and I thank you for the extra effort um, because it's, it's nice not to be the one for once. Uh, when you get to travel, of course, right? So, um, and I hope uh, we, we're gonna make it worth your while. So, and I hope you're already enjoying beautiful Buenos Aires. With that, collective creation of open science, uh, it's gonna be inspired in work of bees because we know that excellent science is done by a bunch, a ton of worker bees, invisible bees. Uh, so that's gonna be the whole metaphor all over uh, here. Okay, but first things first, this is the hive that, has, that is behind me and that has worked really very, very hard and even a lot more than I to put together this talk today. So thanks, thank you, Metalosensia team, on that. Particularly, Lorela Sensi and Julian Wede that had put a lot more, yeah. Uh, Lorela, please, show yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's there. <laughs> that applause is definitely welcome, thank you. Uh, so these two guys worked a lot more than I. I'm here just like because I had to be here. Uh, yeah, that's my name. Uh, I wear a lot of hats, and I've been wearing a lot of hats since 
over 30 years ago in research. Because I started, my first gig in research was when I was 15 in the Natural Museum, Argentina Museum of Natural Sciences in Parque Centenario in the city. I prepped fossils <laughs> and also type uh, a PhD dissertation reference because back in the age there was no point and click, uh, you know, reference managers. <laughs> and so, and they paid me like not for my time really or the person's time, but they paid me some symbolic honoraria for that work, volunteer work. Because, you know, so I, at least I didn't have to pay out of my pocket to travel there. So um, it's been 30, over 30 years. It's a really long career. So many, many hats over the years, many, many hats still today. For the sake of this talk, I'm a researcher coming from biostatistics that specializes in health artificial intelligence or data science particularly the responsible use of data at the University of Buenos Aires, and I also co-founded Metadocencia. And you think maybe we have someone that was born in Buenos Aires from Latin America. We got diversity here. Well, no. Uh, I've come from uh, an ultra-privileged um, elite in this city and in the region because I'm white, I speak English, I got a PhD in the US, I'm a tenure academic, a rare kind in Argentina, and uh, you get the idea. Several intersectionalities of privilege, which that's why I'm here, and a lot of other folks are not. And the majority of the folks that should be here are not, so. Now, let's go to the hive and how and what are the experiences we had of collecting creation of healthy and safe community, inclusive communities in the global south in Latin America. It all started in 2017 with Our Ladies Buenos Aires. I co-founded the first active chapter of Our Ladies Global in this city back then. And well, then, it grew up a lot in the region and uh, up to being today 30% of Our Ladies Global in Latin America, which is the same as in the US and in Western Europe. But let us hear about Our Ladies Buenos Aires today because it's been a while I don't do anything with them. Oops, and that's something that it's going wrong because I didn't turn off Spotify. <laughs> so. Okay, now it should work. Hola, mi nombre es Monica Alonso, vivo en Buenos Aires, Argentina, y represento a Ladies Buenos Aires. Formamos parte de Our Ladies, que es una organización internacional que promueve la diversidad de género en la comunidad de R y tiene más de 200 capítulos en todo el mundo. Desde Our Ladies Buenos Aires realizamos talleres online o presenciales y abiertos a toda la comunidad para aprender sobre R y difundir novedades o trabajos realizados, nuevos paquetes, También interactuamos con comunidades amigas, eh, por ejemplo, las de sistemas, eh, Women in Data Science, Metadocencia y otras. Eh, en estos casos eh, lo hacemos promocionando eventos, eh, dictando talleres o participando de mesas en algunas conferencias realizadas por estas comunidades. Thank you, Moni. Thank you very much. And as you heard, our Ladies Buenos Aires already has a hive of communities around, right? Uh, Moni named a few. So that's the idea, Hi, you know, little hives that get together with other little hives and make a larger hive. It all started here. Then 2018, 2019, a huge amongst amount of work, a ton of communities that I'm on the record talking about, so that's all news. Newest news is 2020, um, and there, uh, worker bee Malvika Sharan came zzz, 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 to this worker bee. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Hey, Laura, you should know OLS. Uh, it's it's a 
go high, safe, inclusive, diverse, and we would like to you know, connect more with the Latin American high. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Come visit us. And the same thing for the Turing Way. Bzz, bzz, bzz. And I went flying there and I was like, hmm, this feels really good. I really feel included. I really feel well. So I buzzed back to uh, Latin America and say, hey, we should all go there. We, let's start buzzing around these communities. Uh, so let's hear about the Turing Way. And maybe some jazz will pop up. Hola, mi nombre es Alexandra Araujo Álvarez y soy jefe de proyectos de investigación en The Turing Way. The Turing Way es un proyecto colaborativo de código abierto que se apoya en la diversidad de sus integrantes para asegurar que la ciencia de datos sea beneficiosa para todas las personas. Es un libro, un proyecto de código abierto, una comunidad y una cultura de colaboración. Un libro sobre reproducibilidad. El objetivo de este proyecto es hacer que la investigación reproducible sea demasiado fácil para no hacerla. Para ser completamente reproducible, tenemos que cubrir todos los pasos del ciclo de investigación. Y eso puede ser abrumador, pero para eso está The Turing Way. El proyecto está coliderado por Kirsty Whitaker y Malvika Sharan y cuenta con más de 400 contribuyentes a nivel mundial. Thank you so much for your allyship. The Turing Way, and if you know, if you want to learn more, do not miss their talk tomorrow at 2:30 p.m. in room, room A. But in 2020, March 20, March 2020, we all know what happened. So the Latin American hive was. <laughs> what do we do with the online classes? Oh, we know how to teach online already, and folks really need it. So. That's how Metadocencia came along. And let us hear about Metadocencia from someone from the community. Hola, mi nombre es Romina Pendino. Soy parte del equipo de Metadocencia. Les contamos que desde Metadocencia construimos comunidad, colaborando para la disponibilización de recursos de calidad, de alta calidad, que acorten brechas, las brechas de desigualdad que capaciten a sectores claves y que permitan el desarrollo de capacidad regional, científica, técnica, de investigación. Trabajamos para que la producción, el intercambio y la aplicación de saberes científicos sean globalmente equitativos, todo esto con una mirada local. Thank you, Rami. And if you all want to know more about the amazing research work that uh, Metadocencia is starting to develop because we are all researchers and technicians. Um, go tomorrow to their talk at 2.30 p.m. in room B. So, till here, all the work that I was mentioning, except for oh, less on the Turing Way, I'm talking about them, um, it was volunteer work in the Latin American Hive. And, well, it's not a virtue, it's a problem. And it's pervasive in open science, in open source, in academia, even in activism. Why? Well, it's not sustainable. It's prone to burnout, it's prone to ex exploitation. And as of late, I've discovered that it's also a huge guilt trip for those that do not have the privilege of time to volunteer for free their time. So, um, well, um, it's actually a barrier for real diversity and inclusion. You have the privilege of time when you know when, right? So, this symbolic honoraria of paying at least expenses of what it gets to be there, even if, if these are symbolic honoraria paid by the Global North, oh well, they go a long way. So, never. Never diminish those and, and try to do those. And, or microgrants. And don't take me wrong here. I'm not talking about grassroots organizations that are just starting. Of course, I'm not naive. You need to start somewhere with volunteer time. I'm talking here about global organizations with millions of dollars of funding or with access in the north to get them. So 
And if you are starting a grassroots organization, you need to start thinking about funding on day one, because otherwise you will not be sustainable. You will burn out your volunteers, so on and so forth. And believe me, I know it's not easy, but I've been there and done that. So don't repeat my mistakes. And with that, I want to tell you that we were survivors at Metanocencia because at the brink of burnout, it came God for Science and Society, CSNS for the friends. And not for the friends, but you know, acronyms. Um, and, like, and, and we get to them because our dear Kate Herwork just convinced me that I was not going to be bounced back once more. And with them, we won a first event fund, and then a second event fund, and then we even got fiscally sponsored by them. When I couldn't even find any funding among friends in the region or anywhere else, and less fiscal sponsorship, because apparently the Apple was too fun or something, I don't know. So, uh, and that is structure, and don't get it wrong, God for Central Society is not just a fiscal sponsor, they also have buzzing communities of practice, and as of late, they are developing one that is at the intersection of climate, climate change, infectious disease, uh, software development, and then users. And it, it's looking very interesting. I don't, and they are inclusive of Latin America, so you might want to check it out and make sure to reach out to them, and by no means miss out on the reception today at 5 p.m. at a really beautiful rooftop a few blocks from here. So. And with that structure and fiscal structure for Metadocencia and this, that little money that make us run through 2021 came along ZZI. And let us hear about ZZI. Hello, my name is Kate Hartwick. I live in Seattle, Washington in the United States. I'm speaking to you today as a representative of Chen Zuckerberg Initiative, where I work as a program manager on the Open Science team as a part of the Science Initiative. CZ Science aims to cure, prevent, or manage all human diseases by the end of this century. CZI engages in this work by building open source software tools, funding scientific research, resources, and infrastructure, and doing science via our family of institutes. On the Open Science team, we support this goal with a vision for universal and immediate open sharing of all scientific knowledge, processes, and outputs. When presented with the question, how do you build community from your organization? I reflect on our vision. Universal sharing means a global, diverse, and inclusive community has access to all parts of science. At CZI, we build this community by funding organizations and projects that increase access to scientific research, support underrepresented individuals in science, and more generally, support open science practices among the biomedical research community. We build community by listening to and learning from the communities we want to support so that we can help them create the resources they need. Thank you so much for your allyship uh, the, uh, for the Open Science team at ZZI. And with that push uh, and that sustainability grant we got uh, from ZZI that allowed Metadocencia to go from almost fully volunteer to fully funded uh, for a couple of years till we get farther, um, came more opportunities of collaborating with OLS, and I want to take this opportunity to thank Yoye Hude in the middle of the screen here for insights about this talk. And we were able to start buzzing around other hives in Africa this time, more global south to south collaborations, and Lab in Cameroon, Talarfa in South Africa. But it's not like we forgot Latin America, don't worry. We also met La Conga Physics uh, from Andean Latin America, in, um, and no less incubated uh, this super cool uh, kind of new community, but uh, hear them out. Hola, mi nombre es José Luis. Vivo en Cochabamba, Bolivia, represento Comité Lab. 
Conectorial es una comunidad sin fines de lucro conformada por editores de revistas científicas, de acceso abierto y profesionales de diversas disciplinas involucrados en la edición científica. En Conectorial se desarrollan recursos educativos vinculados a la edición científica y creamos espacios de encuentro para compartir experiencias y conocimientos en el ámbito de la edición científica. Su objetivo es fomentar la ciencia abierta, la producción científica y la promoción del crecimiento de revistas de acceso abierto en Latinoamérica y el Caribe. En Conectorial creemos y fomentamos un trabajo amigable con respecto a los tiempos de todos los involucrados, con priorización la salud mental y el desarrollo personal donde las voces de todos son escuchadas, no importa el rol que desempeñe. Thank you so much, José Luis. And the hive kept growing over 2022. Uh, we got to work with Cabana and with the Latin American Initiative for Open Data, um, with Fundación Vía Libre, and by the way, do not miss Fundación Vía Libre's talk tomorrow at 3.20 in room B. And oh, and I forgot to mention, OLS also, it's uh, having a presentation tomorrow at 2.55 in room C. So uh, do not miss if you want to learn more about OLS. Sorry, OLS, I love you, you know, but I forgot to mention. Um, and we also got to buzz around this other project. Mi nombre es Sabrina, vivo en Buenos Aires, Argentina, y represento el proyecto Gestión Epidemiológica basada en Inteligencia Artificial y Ciencia de Datos, o como le decimos por sus siglas en inglés, con cariño, ARFAI. ARFAI es un proyecto que desarrolla herramientas tecnológicas basadas en Inteligencia Artificial y Ciencia de Datos que aplicadas a los registros electrónicos de salud permitan anticipar y detectar potenciales brotes epidémicos y favorezcan la toma de decisiones de salud pública preventiva. ARFAI procura conformar equipos balanceados en género donde las mujeres ocupan los roles de conducción. Como el objetivo del proyecto es también tener un impacto en la salud pública nacional, es fundamental la diversidad, incluyendo personas de diversas disciplinas y de todas partes de nuestro país para lograr la construcción común de sentidos. Priorizamos un ambiente de trabajo amigable, respetando el tiempo personal y la salud mental, así como incentivando la participación de todos sus integrantes sin importar su antigüedad o rol dentro del proyecto. Thank you Sabrina and I recommend you her talk today at 3:20 p.m. in room B. And well, the hive keeps growing and growing and growing and these are all communities that, you know, kind of work together indirectly because healthy, inclusive bzz, 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 bzz. And there's also, um, uh, you know, there's, it's, it's a huge hive at this point. Uh, I will show you one last video about this uh, brilliant team. Hi, my name is Emmy Tang. I live in Utrecht in the Netherlands, and I am the engagement lead at Invest in Open Infrastructure. Hi, my name is Jerry Salanga. I live in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm the Communications Associate at IOI. Hola, yo soy Tania Hernández. Vivo en la Ciudad de México, y en IOI soy analista de datos de investigación. IOI is a nonprofit initiative dedicated to improving funding and resourcing for open, community-owned technologies and systems supporting research and scholarship. We aim to provide targeted, evidence-based guidance to funders and supporters of open infrastructure worldwide on how and where to invest. So how do we build community? En IOI apoyamos el desarrollo y mantenimiento de plataformas y foros que posibilitan que los miembros de las comunidades científicas en todo el mundo compartan entre sí conocimientos basados en contextos específicos. Creemos que estos aprendizajes colaborativos contribuyen al desarrollo de un ecosistema de investigación robusto y sostenible, capaz de abordar los desafíos locales y contribuir a la producción global de conocimiento. We're very grateful to be in partnership with value aligned organizations across the globe, like Meta Docencia and the West and Central Africa Research and Education Network, WACREN, 
Working with them has enabled us to always think about the people whose voices are missing from conversations about funding and infrastructure and how we can listen more closely and help to amplify their voices. We are really happy to be part of this buzzing community and we're looking forward to opportunities to know more about you. Thank you so much for your allyship, IOI team. And the latest addition to our wonderful inclusive hi is NASA. Uh, yeah, NASA, the rocket science thing. <laughs> And I kind of believe it, but uh, it's true because, uh, well, we're going to be uh, teaching how to transform research to open science in Spanish from Metadocencia, but together with OLS, 2I2C, and God for Science and Society. So healthy hives, right? Excellent science. So some practicalities on how we get to the healthy hives. Um, Essentially, it's, we all know, it's not solo science, right? <laughs> it's not uh, 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 one, two Nobel Prizes. That's, it's all about worker bees. It's been for decades, and I, I, I don't study those phenomena, but I mean, it's pretty obvious. Uh, <laughs> we all know it. Um, so how does it, so in a nutshell, go collective. Let's go really collective, for real. And how do you do that? Well, you pay for and invest in persons and high building, safe, high building, inclusive high building. So you don't use volunteers when you have money. And how do you get to safety? You include the locally marginalized in your decision tables and they get to vote. Why? Because otherwise, you will not get safe communities because they have no power and you will not get to know when they don't feel included and they are unsafe because they have no power. So you need to include them. And well, have you noticed all these wonderful diverse communities from all over the globe and you know how potent they are? Uh, incubate geographical diverse grassroots initiatives it's, it's a really good idea, in my humble opinion. And let's stop solo keynotes, please, and solo awards, and solo prizes, and, sol and personalisms, and individualisms. Let's, you know, let's cut that crap. Yeah, I know, right? I'm, I'm sola here. Not for too long. Uh, so let's prioritize collaboration, the greater good, diversity, Transdisciplinarity, which is a special kind of diversity. Let's, you know, all disciplines, the same stage, not like just computer science, like the queen and then the rest. And, um, and the last one is the most important. Let's keep ourselves really accountable because it's very easy to come here and say very nice words and then go home and do nothing. Uh, and give like these recommendations, they're easy for me, right? I know none of the above is easy to do, Really, I know, I empathize, uh, but let's keep us ourselves accountable, for real. And if we don't do the above, let's lose the funding. That's, you know, this capitalistic work only understands money. So let's keep ourselves accountable in the real world. With that, I want to invite you all, I only show you a part of the hive, and you can go uh, to this link and, and know them all. It's a lot larger than what I show you, thanks to the huge amount of work that Laurel and Julian put there. And now, when you think about the questions that you have about these topics, I want to invite here with me, this is gonna become a mini panel, and I would like you to uh, join me to welcome with a really warm, and all the screams come now, okay? Not before. Uh, uh, please join me to welcome Dr. Jose Luis Vilca Villegas uh, from Connectorial. Please, Jose Luis. <laughs> Dr. Tania Hernandez from IOI. Dr. Sabrina Lopez from RFI. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Jessica Formoso from Our Ladies Buenos Aires and Meta Docencia. Dr. Malvika Sharan from the Turing Way and OLS. And last, but not at all least, Dr. Kate Herwork from the Open Science Team at the CCI. Yeah. Okay, this is starting to look a little bit like the Obelisco when they woke up. I think you've watched that video. Um, so, okay, so, <laughs> probably, right? So, uh, while you keep organizing your thoughts and questions, uh, I have one for them. Uh, that is, if you had a magic wand that could grant you anything for your project, organization, community, what thing would you do, would you, with, what wish would you ask that magic one, and why? And who would like to start with that one? Go ahead. Kate, please, thank you. I rep Oh, take mine. Gracias. If I had a magic wand, uh, for my community, which is very diverse, globally distributed, includes people um, like those you see here, a lot of open source developers, people who are in technology, people who work with people, I would want for them the time and the space to really talk with each other and learn more about how they might be able to interact. Um, this is a cheater answer. <laughs> because we also know that time and space require money. They require the ability of people to meet together. Um, but I think ultimately it's that communication that's really necessary to help people understand how they might be able to interact. And I think that what Laura has been discussing today is creating that space for people to be able to do that. So in fact, uh, you have brought the magic wand. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Um, who wants to go next here? Sabri, I, I just saw you move your hand, so go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> well, we don't have I'm a here. lot of time to, to be too polite here. So. Yep. Well, I'm here representing our five, that is a community that is just starting, and we always need more funding, obviously. And we want to have the opportunity for more calls for funding that are truly centered in the, south, in the global south, because it's not easy to apply to this. As Laura said, uh, for example, speaking English or writing English is a privilege in our region. So we want truly calls that uh, how you say? Um, say it in Spanish. Consideren. That consider. That consider uh, communication issues, not just the, the um, language, because uh, we can afford that in some way. But um, the, the, for example, the, the calendar, the seasons, maybe uh, the application is in the middle of our ho um, holidays, summer vacations, and that is really, really hard. So that's it's my, uh, the, the whole community desire. Great, Sabri. Thank you. Tanya. Yeah, for me it will be the same that Kate and in Basin Open we, we truly believe in collaborations, but always the constraint of time. We don't have the space and also um, there are not that many incentives to collaborate with other organizations because funders assign the resources to only one organization, so probably I will say that change kind of uh, grant making has been made uh, to uh, advance more collaborations and also recognize that those uh, collaborations need to have local representation. If we are talking about Latin America, grant makers need to be sure that there is a local uh, organization or collective uh, making, making that effort. Thank you, Tanya. Maybe we can all ask together. Nicely, and yeah. um, Jesse. 
Hi, I'm representing Our Ladies Buenos Aires. Um, Our Ladies Buenos Aires, uh, it's, we have right now 10 organizers, so I'm talking in behalf of them. And I kind of asked in advance what they wanted to say, and the first thing that came to mind was, well, we want more than 24 hours in the day <laughs> to get things done. Who's going to uh, pay for that? <laughs> yeah, so finally we agreed that that was kind of hard, but maybe at some point um, if the work was, even though volunteered, uh, it was also paid, that would mean that we could maybe dedicate more quality time to these activities. Also in Argentina, like in many other countries, women are still in charge of the care and paid work and it takes a lot of time in our day. So I think that in line with what Laura said before, um, volunteer work, uh, it's beautiful and sometimes very, very hard if there's no money behind it. Uh, maybe you could all ask uh, our friends in POSIT, they, they may have some uh, few dollars to send us to the south. <laughs> I don't know, just an idea here. Maybe there's some friends that could reach out to them. Uh, Mavika, thank you. Um, I, first of all, I feel so emotional um, for the inclusive leadership that Laura is providing. And I think when individuals feel valued, there's a lot people can do. And that's authentically what I really, really care for, to create safe and welcoming space where people can come, connect, identify solutions together, co-build it, and benefit from it. And often when I'm asked, what should you ask the funders for? I Think about, oh, they are looking for big software, big output, big research stuff. But really, genuinely, I think we need to care about process development, which is not the output. Can we invest in that? And I'm just going to extend to, I was going to say, can we pay the volunteer? But not just that, can we actually give them the job that they deserve for the skills that they have? Because volunteer work isn't sustainable. Some of the work these volunteers need, because they're creating solutions that are individually important for them, is someone else doing the, I'm using the word shitty job, of admin work applying funding for them, advocating for them, talking for them, giving them spaces, helping them in the background, make great talks. I feel like we need to just create and diversify positions and pay for the process development. <laughs> Thank you so much, Malvika. And yeah, totally, jobs, of course. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I was criticizing volunteer works, but I'm not saying like <laughs> it should be jobs for real because it's, uh, all of these volunteers have PhDs, postdocs, early career researchers, mid-career researchers. I mean, like this is huge talent from the region. It's not like some like a 15-year-old cleaning fossils in the museum. It's like really highly formed folks that you have. I mean, they are all doctors. Okay, I think it's your turn, Jose Luis. And if you want to go in Spanish, I, I'll do my best. I'm not a professional translator, but and if you want to go in English, go ahead and uh, whatever you want. Well, I, I am I am part of Connectoria. Yeah. Uh, we want to create an inclusive leadership and good uh, editorial practice uh, in Latin America in well in Caribbean. And we, well, it is it's our dream to to create a, a a network with other editors and potential editors in different areas of sciences. Is is the part of our dream to to include some more people in in well well in uh, speak with uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah yes. dale, dale. That, that's your wish yeah yeah that's my wish okay and awesome and yeah. and we really need that in Latin America because we we are the, uh, you know like well all, all other dream is uh, yeah. we want to to collaborate with uh, data science uh, pick, uh, pick up a uh, public knowledge project because. This organization uh, developed a software that we use, uh, I use, uh, so open journal system. Uh, it's a good uh, uh, software to 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 publish uh, research. Awesome, thank you very much. So that was the question I had for them. But uh, what questions do you have? You had plenty of time to think now, so please. Yes, please. Uh, let me. Hi, thank you for all the insights. One thing I, I'd like you to talk more about is work relations on those 
comes, I'm, I'm a software developer, and I'm super privileged, not only by my origin, but also by my job, because it's a hype thing. Everyone needs software developers. We get high salaries. A bunch of shitty companies, but we, if, if you search enough, you can find a decent work relation because of all this, this privilege. And then we, when you look around and you see people who work in nonprofits, in organizations that, well, they have a mission to fight for uh, social justice, they, they have all these beautiful things they're uh, aiming for. But when you look at the people working there, uh, they're getting poor salaries, uh, terrible work hours, uh, you know, no internal democracy, and, and all sorts of things that you expect from a big company. You know, when you just go work for in McDonald's or whatever, you expect this kind of work relation. But when you're working for uh, an organization that supposedly has a mission of, you know, m making the world better, they should s probably start with their workers, right? That's a great question, and I, I can think of several folks here that could uh, I'm like, uh, Jesse could tell us about, uh, could tell you about the governance building from Metado Sense, yeah. I think Malvika could tell you a lot about it. I think Tanya can tell you a lot about it, right? I mean, who wants to crack at it? I can go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, um, Laura just mentioned um, we, in Metado Sensia, we build governance as a community. Uh, I om I'm only a part of Metal Sensia since 2022, and through the process of creating it, I was uh, part of it, and my opinion was valued as well at the same level as everybody else's. And we decided together what kind of structure we wanted, how the decisions would be made, how the people responsible uh, in the um, like the coordinating areas would be held accountable if there was something that they weren't doing according to what we thought of together. So I think that way of organizing governance guarantees that the people that it's involved in every level of the organization um, will be, well, it's a good relationship with everybody. It's, it's taking care, it's a safe space, and I love it. <laughs> This one, I have to give shout out to Danielle because we were talking literally about this in the morning, how open science work is advocacy work and how it kind of, you know, expects, people are expected to work in bad hours and fight for because uh, they are passionate and it's very hard to then draw that boundary where does my work stop and me as an individual exist. And I feel like um, applying feminist lens to the work that we do, recognizing the care work as actually important professional work, accounting for that in terms of monetary. I mean, I know so if not everything can be paid, but I think we need to start valuing care work as very expensive work and not free work. And flipping that dynamic at the leadership is very important, because if your leader can demonstrate that they are doing the right thing, um, their employees are more motivated to do it. So if you are a leader, don't be that person, I think. And I know it's hard, but really, like if you are gonna inspire a younger generation of leaders and you're really showing them a bad leadership, you are building a bad narrative for open science leadership overall. So it's re the responsibility should be on the leaders, um, internal advocacy if your leaders are bad. <laughs> Yeah, at IOI recently we did a research on labor arrangements and other than the volunteer work that Laura mentioned extensively, we also found a lot of disparities in terms of, you know, like multi-year contracts versus one-month contracts. So even though when we are talking about pay job, there are a lot of like complexities on that. Uh, also, um, there is a new trend that employees are getting paid based on the country where they are based, which is really, um, I mean, there can be pros and cons, pero, but the, the, the thing is that 
people are getting different pays, uh, doing the same job. So that's also another thing that should be accounted for. Okay, I am. I hope that covers a little bit and how these communities are. I'm, I'm not saying this is done all over. I mean, this is how these vasting communities of aligned value communities is trying to do things. And at Metalocencia, we were able to do that because we had the sustain of open, of open science teams, like the grant from CCI. You're too complex folks for us. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, I know it's not your fault. But uh, like you're representing the thing here. So. <laughs> you said so. <laughs> Okay, I love you, Kate. Okay, uh, so uh, it's you need money to get that. Uh, it took us several months, a ton of meetings. It's all recorded, it's all documented, uh, and then we tried to share how we did it, and you know we created the mission, the vision, the values, how we behave uh, every day according to those values, and we every three months we talk to each other. We are a 15-person team. We talk to each other, evaluate how we are doing. And, and if, if there's something to correct. So we are trying to build a good culture with what we have. And I forgot to mention that both Sabrina and Jose Luis in their videos uh, mentioned mental health. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, uh, but uh, well, in Latin America, we work with really few resources. And so, and, and we work very, very hard. Maybe the results are not there and communicated properly because we don't have the resources to communicate them. But we really do a ton of work that doesn't get seen. And uh, so mental health is m more important. Take, taking care of mental health is more important than ever. So we are trying to build this healthy hive, taking all of those into account. It's working so far. We are keeping fingers crossed. This is not easy. At all. We live in a world that goes against all of these values. But I know this is a wonderful community that aligns. I mean, this conference, it's my first time at it, but I, I, I know that a lot of you align with these values and support them. So uh, this is an invitation. And if, if the recommendations I gave you are still very general and you don't know how to implement them back home, or in your projects, I'm available to give you more specifics. Uh, so, like, reach out anytime. And with that, uh, I think we're going to be closing because I, I know we have a couple of more minutes. But who? I mean, you all can use a couple of more minutes to uh, go lunch. Thank you very much. Wait, wait. Please, Metalocencia team in the room, join me here because this club is for you too. Come on, all here. Take your mask off so people can see your pretty faces, if you're comfortable. The high thing, it was all her idea. I am not that creative. Okay, thank you very much.